Hi guys, uh, so I'm going to start. So I hope maximum people have joined. So whoever has to join, they can join. I hope you are able to hear me. Uh, you can type on chat if you guys are able to hear me. You can type yes so that I can start. Yes, I can hear you. Hi, Dharmendra. Yes. Okay, that's fine. So uh, I will give a brief introduction about myself. I am Santosh Sharma and I am from DRS Infocom. I provide online training and this is my website. You can check the course here and you can also follow, subscribe my YouTube channel. I am also recording this uh, video. So I will upload this in my YouTube channel and probably you can get it once I will upload it. So uh, let's start. This is what I will cover today. So this I have also shared in the chat. So I'll try to cover maximum topics or almost all the topics if time will allow. So here I will uh, discuss for the Palo Alto firewall only. I will not try to uh, compare with other firewalls, but uh, wherever it would be required, then I'll do so. Palo Alto firewall, it was founded in 2005 by NITUK. I'm just giving you basic introduction from the starting who are fresher, they can have some idea. So Nidjuk has founded this Palo Alto Firewall in 2005 and in 2007, he just, uh, in, uh, he came up with his firewall and there were some great features which he has given in his firewall. And it just thrilled the market because at the time market was not having such a great, awesome technology like app ID identification. Currently. Uh, maximum firewalls are having mechanism that their firewall can identify the application very well. Like if you heard about the uh, firewall name FortiGate, that is also comes under the leader. Its UTM feature is very perfect. But in, if we talk about 2007, that was really awesome feature which uh, came into the market at the time. And content ID inspection till day, this is really awesome feature. We will discuss this in detail, how it is different from other vendors. So uh, there is one thing you might have heard, SP3, single pass parallel processing. This is something was uh, new in the Palo Alto. And all these three things are, uh, guys, please do not allow, do not enable your video, okay? So this is giving me kind of distraction. So this was, these all three things were patented by the Palo Alto. To understand what is, what is a single pass parallel processing, we should be aware that what is multi-pass architecture. So in multi-pass, what was happening, your packet will come and it will get processed by the firewall policy. It will get checked at the layer three, layer four policy, and then layer two, layer three functionality will be performed at the last. If you have enabled UTM features, then what will happen, your URL filtering, your IPS, your antivirus will get checked. But all those having different database. So if they are having different database, so what will happen, the packet will go down, get checked, and again, this thing will happen. You can see this thing is happening again and again. It is passing multiple times. So what is happening, performance is degrading. So performance is degrading because it has to check multiple times. Multiple times your packet is passing. So this is multi-pass architecture. So parallel to came with single pass parallel processing. So I hope you understood what is multi-pass. I will take an example. Suppose you are going to a mall and there uh, you have a box. You have your uh, suitcase and your, in your suitcase, there is one uh, lunch box and your clothes and there is some your beauty items. So there are different guards to check different things. You will open your lunch box. You will check if there is like no poison in that. Maybe if you'll go to the mall, then you can offer that to someone. He will check your clothes and he will check. So there, is, there should not be something bad written in your clothes like that can give other people a bad impression. So he will check your beauty items or something. He will check there should not be a knife or something like that, that you can harm somebody else. So they all are doing their job perfectly fine. They are checking you in all the aspects. You should, you should not be carrying something dangerous. But what is happening? 
your time is also getting wasted and your resources are also getting utilized multiple resources so that is multi pass that was an example of multi pass so here performance is getting degraded now we can discuss about what is single pass so single pass parallel processing these two are two different terminologies and technology we cannot combine them so we have to understand them very separately single pass means your packet is passing singly one time only parallel processing is parallel processing of your hardware it is not like that if your packet is coming inside and at the same time it is going here 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 that is not happening here this is not a parallel processing that can be a parallel processing like of single packet which is again wastage if you are sending a packet at three different places same time that is again wastage you are multiplying your packet then again resources will get utilized parallel processing hardware means your hardware is doing parallel processing so how it is doing i'll explain you so this is uh, i have taken an example of one machine so what happens when you go to bus stand when you go to airport again this is a real life example you put your suitcase here and your suitcase pass one time this is single pass it is not like that it has to open your suitcase and it has to check what are the items here and it is not like that there are different machines to check that it will go once checked once and then you will carry it and you, you can go but all the items are put in the series only okay one by one they will go one another one that will come now what is parallel processing that is parallel processing hardware now you can see you have multiple hardware okay so if four person will come they can put their suitcase and their suitcase will get processed at the same time okay this is called parallel processing now how we can apply this in our uh, palo alto firewall i will take you there so single pass single pass is always applied in your content id content id is where your unified engine is there common signatures are there means that content is processed only once how it is processed once i will explain you these are just the written things which i am explaining performance remains steady your performance will not be changed so what happens there are two type of techniques to inspect something one is flow based another is stream based flow based and flow based sorry one is stream based and another is proxy based flow based name is in uh, fortigate stream based and flow based are the same proxy based are like you have given your item and your item suppose you have seven boxes your seven boxes will be buffered and they will check one by one another example i can take suppose you are going along with your family to a mall then you all the person will come one by one from the gate you all will come and you have to gather somewhere and you all will be checked together but stream based is that once one will go that will check at that time there is no buffering same as in palo alto packet will come into the firewall that will get processed that will get scanned and that will go forward if you are downloading 1 gb file that file will be checked in chunks it is not like that firewall has to buffer that it will be checked in flow but in proxy based firewall has to download whole file it has to check after downloading it has to inspect so this what is happening your performance will degrade in proxy based fortigate like i am talking about other vendor that is supporting proxy based and stream based also but palo alto is only having stream based malware scanning so that is the reason it is so much uh, fast performance is good another example this is uh, this is what they are doing how packet is passing only single time there is only one pattern database there are no different databases like we have seen in our existing diagram if you have vulnerability 
scanning, if you want to check for malware matches, if you want to check for botnet, file type matches like your data card, uh, sorry, your credit card, okay, and data matches like DLP, if you talk about data loss prevention, if you are updating any Adobe file, so there is only one single database where your file will get checked, where everything will happen here. Okay, there is no nothing like that. Your packet once come, it has to go by different databases. There is only one database where it gets checked. Scan it all, scan it once. It will scan everything, whatever profile will be applied and will check only once. There is another database which is URL filtering database. So there are one million URL database we can create like custom URL we can create and 180 million URL database already exists and keep on increasing day by day. So this is uh, uh, the hardware of hardware diagram of uh, Palo Alto. It's divided into two parts. One is control plane and other is data plane. In control plane, you can see there are dual CPU, there are different RAMs, hard disk. In data plane also, there are, it is divided into three parts. There are three different processors. In control plane, as the name is saying that it is for controlling the firewall. Like you want to manage the firewall, then it's the control plane. If you want to process your data, data means your internet data, if you want to access internet or you want to talk with someone, then that is data plane. Where your NATing functionality will happen, that is network processor, security processor, is hardware engine. I will not go into the detail of that, but my purpose of saying is, you can see there are multiple hardware. So the parallel SP3, parallel hardware processing, what I was saying, so there are multiple hardwares are there, that's what what they are doing multiple time, uh, they are processing the, your packet. Okay, so this is the second example. This is a big hardware. You can see now the cores are more. Okay, RAM is also increased. It depends how much money you are spending. Now you can see there are three engines. Okay, three engines for SSL, IPsec, and their signature matching also there are different engines and data plane there is a big big uh, 20 gbps of speed processor is there so it depends upon how much uh, money you are spending and this whole slide is only on understanding single pass parallel processing so again another example to give you an idea what is that earlier what happens one packet is for your accessing your firewall so obviously that will go to your control plane. That all packet will be saved in the CPU buffer. This is CPU buffer, that will be buffered. Okay, why they are buffered? Because there is a one common CPU. Okay, and common CPU would be having common CPU buffer. One by one packet will go. Okay, you can see the packets are going in series. They are processed in series. Why? Because we have only one common CPU. But in case of Palo Alto, we have now multiple cores. Okay, now packet will come. You can see access firewall and internet access packets are coming. They will get processed in different cores and they will parallelly their process. This is called parallel processing. Here is another example we are going into detail. Now, this is taken from the data plane. Earlier, that was only single data plane where the packets were handling and we can go in detail. A packet is coming, it's going to the data plane and again here it is divided into its different engines. And in different engines, you can see there are different CPUs, CPU1, CPU2, okay. And it will get processed from them and it will go to the signature match and again parallelly it will go to the egress. So you can see the whole process is happening parallelly. So this is what parallel hardware processing. So hardware is doing a parallel processing. Otherwise your packets are coming in series. One after another, your packet will come. Okay, but they are getting processed parallelly. One question might come in your mind like there are different CPUs. So how these CPUs are handling packets like 
who will handle the packet for CPU one, CPU two? How this is being handled? So there is again a very good load load balancing which is happening in CPU level. There is one CPU which is called master, and another CPUs it will be working under the master. Packet will come. If new UDP connection packet came, it will distribute to one of the CPU which is free. If another UDP comes, it will distribute to another. If TCP comes, then it will distribute to another. So here the thing is that new TCP connection and new UDP connections will be handled by the other CPUs, and that will be given by the CPU master. It will work as a manager, like there is a manager in our office. He work comes to him, then he distribute the work to all the members. Same thing happens here. There is a one CPU which acts as a master and it distributes the packets. What kind of packets it distributes? New UDP and new TCP. So now the question comes: What kind of packet CPU master does? I have seen that I was explaining this. Can you please uh, comment on chat that um, you have? Hello, are you able to hear me? So. Uh, have you seen up to here, master computer? Master CPU? Okay. Okay guys, I really very sorry, but I have recorded the video. So I will, uh, I will upload that after that. So maybe once again, connection get uh, disconnected. So I will join again because there is some fluctuation happening today. Of the light, so one more time it may happen. So I was talking about the there are CPUs, one master CPU is there, and there are some other CPUs which will work under the master CPU. So that is like a manager who is handing the work to other PCs and other CPUs. New UDP connections will get handled by the other CPU and new TCP connection. But there are some high-level tasks which are handled by the master. CPU, which is new TCP, non TCP UDP, means TCP UDP will be handled by other, but if there is some packet which is non TCP UDP, that will be handled by your master. Another packet is IPsec packet will be handled by the master. Okay, so uh, this is I have written only that written sometime if, if it will get disconnected. So you be on that Zoom meeting, I will connect myself. Okay. So I hope you understood what is single pass parallel processing. As we have seen our diagram, the packets are parallelly processing, it's going parallelly. Another example I can give you, suppose there is one hospital and there is only one doctor sitting, that doctor will take care of ear, nose eyes he will take care of everything okay so what will happen there will be a line of patients they have to wait so the same thing is happening cpu buffer your packets has to wait now we have a big hospital like a madanta and there are different doctors and different doctors are for different specialization one is for ear one is for nose eyes there are different doctors even there there are multiple doctors for same thing like different codes. Okay, now what will happen? There will be very less amount of buffering of patients. Patient can go to different doctors. So, so this is what happening here. They parallelly your patients processed. They have no need to wait. So this is what called parallel processing. Now let's move on to the packet flow. This is the detailed packet flow which I will explain it today some people really afraid of that and so in 10 minutes my meeting will just end so i will connect again so you guys can connect again okay hello question if this is your firewall and your packet is received in the LAN, this is LAN and this is WAN, okay? Suppose this is LAN and this is WAN. And wherever your packet is received, that is called ingress. 
if packet is coming at lan in lan interface it is ingress if packet is coming from outside then this is called ingress okay so it is not like that ingress can be lan or wan it can be anything where your packet is coming so suppose your packet is received and your packet sorry i think someone has asked something okay okay so ingress ingress is where your packet will hit so your packet once your packet hit to your firewall what will happen once your packet is hit to your firewall your firewall just capture some of the information so what that information is it will extract layer 3 and layer 4 information you can see here so this is what explained in this first step it will extract layer 2 layer 3 and layer 4 information so what are the information of layer 2 layer 3 and layer 4 layer 2 mac address you know obviously layer 3 source ip of that system who is accessing google.com suppose source ip will be the ip address of this system destination ip will also go this will be ip of your google.com okay then what will go ingress zone why because it has hit to your ingress interface ingress interface will also be there source code destination port so these all information will be gathered here if you have interface information like ingress interface you have it has hit to lan interface obviously this is a zone based firewall from there you can come to know okay which zone this interface is called so these information are gathered in this step once the packet is received so this is very uh, very vital information that information will be used in next coming steps once your packet will go it will get processed obviously this is a firewall firewall inspection will happen your packet can also be discarded if there are some errors so i am not touching this errors will be there obviously it will get uh, discarded if your packet is ipsec no other changes will happen it will just go again and it will get decrypted after decryption it will again capture layer 3 layer 4 information so for the time being you can just forget your packet is not ipsec you have a simple packet it came from ingress it just extracted layer 2 layer 3 information and there is no error it is get inspected and now there is a most important thing one is fast path and one is slow path you need to remember these things your packet needs to enter into fast path or slow path. there are certain decisions which need to be taken i will close this now Hello. Five hundred and sixty-eight last week. Mr. Sundar, what is the difference between a zone-based firewall and interface file by firewall? To fast path and in fast path, it will check the session. It will do the session lookups. In session lookup, it will find if their packet already exists. If packet is not there, then it has to perform some other task. So the packet came. it went to the fast path and in fast path it will check the session table suppose session is not found if the packet is the first packet obviously it's the first packet and packet will not be found in this session so it will go to the slow path engine in slow path it will perform some of the task like it will do forwarding lookup that we will discuss and the next subsequent packet when it will come it will go to the fast path and there session will be found and it will be get processed in the fast path only okay so this i explained that first packet will go by the slow path only because session will not be found and the second packet or the subsequent packet will follow the fast path because they will get the session i will i will show you how they will see the session so this is the show session command i have run i just enter the google.com so this is the destination this is the source this information it is already having source source port this is source ip this is source port destination ip this is destination port source zone destination zone where it has to nat it and what is the translated ip 
okay so it also identify the application so this is a session table we i have just entered so session all so here it has all the information if it is not having information here then it will go to the slow path in slow path how your packet is processing your packet will come to your slow path and here there are some of the steps it has to do first forwarding uh, lookup this is a very important step and this is also useful in your troubleshooting your whole the packet flow you have to understand it because it will be helpful in troubleshooting as well all your security policies everything will be done by the packet flow only first forwarding lookup it will find the egress zone forwarding means it has to forward the packet and where it has to understand where is egress zone egress interface so your packet will come and there are certain things which it has to take care it depends upon how your firewall is configured is it configured in the tap mode so what is tap mode tap mode is where your traffic is getting inspected okay like there is a tap and traffic is going one by one suppose there is one firewall and there is one fire i'll take one scenario there is a 140 gate firewall okay and existing users are able to access their traffic it's going very fine they are happy now you are a palo alto engineer you went to this organization and you said your your 40 gate firewall is not working properly when the traffic is exiting your wan interface your some of the applications are allowed so they will say no we are able to see everything is blocked but they are saying this is 40 gate that's why you are able to see everything here but what if we you can give us one port as your tap port and we will deploy our palo alto firewall here and we want one copy of your traffic here and we will see the data and from here we will come to know what are the application which your firewall is not blocking so this is called tap port so what is happening in tap port there is only one interface which is getting the traffic it is inspecting is inspecting the traffic and its action is always drop it will not perform any action on that it just monitor the traffic so if your firewall is configured in a tap mode then your egress interface is equal to ingress in interface where your packet is hit that is only the egress interface and action will always be drop if it is a v wire mode what will happen in v wire the firewall work as transparent firewall suppose this is ethernet 1/1 and this is ethernet 1/2 this is a wire and there might be another router okay so if this is 1.1 ip 192.168 1.1 ip this is 192.168.2 ip and if you will embed your firewall in v wire mode they will still be able to ping each other and they will not get any next hop means it is transparently added into your network why i am telling you this because we have to understand where is our egress interface so in v wire we ourselves define our egress interface means our peer interface is always our egress interface So if the packet will come to your v wire your egress is equal to the peer interface it will if it will again get disconnected so i only one minute is remained i will connect again you guys can also connect are india ke taise ki bol india ke ye bande guys all other guys can go on mute as there is some disturbance so i will just uh, close this meeting or it will get closed automatically so one person has asked what is the difference between zone based firewall and uh, what is difference between uh, firewall pattern firewall i think you can hear me so i'll explain only one point about zone based firewall and interface based firewall because this is uh, not our scope of discussion today the difference between interface like fortigate firewall is a interface based firewall so what happens there you can give your policy from lan to wan you can you can define one interface but in zone based in zone you can define multiple interfaces like you can define two interfaces and when you are applying the policy uh, there is one policy that can work 
we have no need to create two different policies like example there is a uh, two different isp isp1 and isp2 okay then there is a one van zone in van zone you can call these two interfaces okay and you have to create policy one policy from land to to van so it will automatically take decision that it has to send to isp1 or isp2 how it will take decision it will check your routing table it will make decision from there where it has to send so this is one one good uh, scenario where we can say that what is the difference between zone and interface okay so we were discussing that what is vwire so in vwire i'll show you if you go to your firewall there is virtual wire option and in virtual wire you can just give your interfaces so first interface will act as the ingress interface the second one is egress interface so the peer interface will be your egress interface so it is defined by yourself so that is what it's saying here if it is a vwire then peer interface is the your egress interface from there it will come to know where it has to forward the packet but if it is layer 2 how it will come to know there is a mac address it will search the mac address and if it is not found it will do the broadcasting guys you will get the recording so you are joining late so definitely i will share the recording with you okay so if you have missed something you will get covered from there so when the packet is coming to layer 3 how it will make the decision 90% firewalls are configured in your layer 3 mode only okay so if the packet will come to your layer 3 how it will make the decision it will make whenever i am asking a question you can type on chat also that will also give you understanding that do you have knowledge of that or not okay if your packet is coming for layer 3 it will check your route it will do the route lookup and from there it will find the next stop so from here it will come to know what is the egress zone okay if there is no route it will discard the packet and then finally it will go for the nat lookup in nat lookup if you can type on the chat how many types of nat are there when the packet will go to the natting you can see here if destination nat is present then do second forwarding lookup so this was first forwarding lookup and this is second forwarding lookup happening here in the destination nat something can ask you question which nat is happening first so destination nat is performed first and then source nat happens okay if your firewall finds destination nat then your second firewall second forwarding lookup will happen now the question is that why second forwarding lookup will happen if it will find the destination nat now let's take an example this is your firewall okay this is your wan interface this is your dmz interface and here is your server and your server is having ip address of 192.168.1.1 you got requirement today that application engineers are having server with this ip address and they are saying that we want outside people to access our server so in that case you need to create destination nat obviously okay so you have one free ip for an example we can take 2.2.2 this is our free ip and 2.2.2 series is which we are using outside dot zero okay now you have to make the natting how you will make the natting so what is your source interface your source interface is your wan interface because from outside people are coming to access your server which is placed here okay 
So your source interface will be WAN interface. Your source IP will be any. And what is your destination interface? You guys can type on chat. What would be your destination interface? Okay, DMZ. So it's very good that you told DMZ. That's that's why I'm explaining here. So DMZ would not be your destination interface. Reason for that is people are accessing your public IP. Okay, they are not aware that what is the private IP. Private IP is in your DMZ, but public IP is towards outside. So your netting will be performed for your original packet. Your original packet is received, like source is received in the WAN interface source. And anybody can access, what anybody can access our 2.2.2.2. They can access 2.2.2, okay. So 2.2.2 is in which interface side? Obviously public IPs are outside our WAN interface. So this is how your NAT policy will become. Okay, this is original packet. When you're making NAT policy, this is the only thing where people make the mistake. Rest of the thing are very easy. I'll, ex I'll show you here also. Let's go to the NATing. We'll create the NAT policy. Okay. I'll delete this all. I'll charge my laptop. Wait a second. So here I'll make the policy. Name you can give any name. Source zone. So here your packet is received at the source side. So this will be van. Okay. Destination zone, okay, we'll talk about destination zone. Source are any, because they are coming from outside, anybody can access our server. What is the IP address of our server? 2.2.2.2, why? Because they are not aware of private IP. From outside, we cannot access private IP. When you are accessing your mobile, mobile from your mobile, you're opening google.com, you're not aware what is the private IP of Google. So here, we need, a destination address which is public so this is public ip address okay source addresses will be any so what would be the destination zone now you can have an idea from here only destination 2.2.2 .2 is towards outside okay because your packet is just hit to your interface it came to your outside interface this, this address is lying on outside so this is original packet. So this is very important. People are not able to understand about original packet. You have to give your like full concentration here. Translatory packet is very easy. This is not difficult. If you are doing source netting, you can select the source netting. If you are doing destination netting, you just need to add the IP address of your original server, 192.168.1.1 for an example. Okay, just click okay. Your net policy is done. If you have to create the security policy, how you will create the security policy? Destination zone in netting will not be DMZ. The reason I have already told you, the reason is that this yet your netting is not happened. Okay, your netting not happened. It means it is, see, see the packet flow. Packet came, packet came and what it does, it just done the forwarding lookup. It done the forwarding lookup, we will, it done the forwarding lookup and from where it came to know that packet came from WAN interface and the destination is 2.2.2. It will find the route for 2.2.2. When it found the route for 2.2.2, it came to know that it is towards outside. It is toward WAN, obviously, Public IP will be towards WAN. That's why destination interface is your WAN. Correct. 
so when it went to the net and it came to know okay netting is happening and that is destination net what is happening now it has to find it has to do the lookup again okay so we were here sorry i was just finding out my slide so your packet is received your packet is received outside wan interface towards wan interface when packet received at the wan interface as i told you in the starting of the slide it will capture layer 2 layer 3 all this information when it capture the source ip it is any anything you can take 1 2 3 1.1.1 .1 .1 .1. when it capture the destination ip it came to know okay destination ip is 2.2.2.2 .2 something like that destination port and all those it captured it done forwarding lookup for destination when it done the forwarding lookup for the destination it came to know this destination is towards wan okay when it done it done okay it's towards wan now it will go for the next step here it's a layer 3 it done lookup it found that destination 2.2 is towards wan so that's why we type the wan over there now it found that packet is having destination netting okay destination netting now i'll go to the firewall okay you can see here this is very important step that's why i'm taking much time here okay so uh, i think we have not clicked yes on that i'm not able to see okay this one so this is your original packet that's what i am typing here i am not doing any netting in original packet okay your original packet is wan and this is what you are accessing destination okay this destination is towards your dmz your firewall you are aware that it, sorry it's it's sorry i typed dmz here it should be wan here ha uh, your destination zone is wan why because your destination is towards here and how your firewall come to know that your destination is towards wan because it will do forwarding lookup okay it will do forwarding lookup from where it came to know now when it came to translate the packet it came to know oh it is destination netting happening and when it is destination netting happening your destination ip address is changed from original ip earlier it was 2.2 now it has changed now firewall is worried it has to do the forwarding lookup again why it has to do because your destination has changed now your destination has changed it has to hello guys are you able to hear me saw that i have selected dmz there but it is not dmz guys are you able to hear me hello okay yeah so, yeah yeah someone typed that uh, that was a wan interface obviously that was wan interface maybe mistakenly i just typed dmz so your packet is received where your original packet is received that will be seen by your forwarding lookup decision like route will be checked and it will come to know okay this is towards wan interface so this is original packet here in nat policy up to here up to original packet no netting is done okay nat is not performed yet here we have defined only original packet when it will go to the trans translate the packet here what we need to define we have defined do the destination netting so it will do the destination netting when it will do destination netting in the nat step nat lookup it found dnat and here once the dnat is found it will do second forwarding lookup now tell me after doing second forwarding lookup what would be our destination zone can you type on correct now it will be dmz because it will find the route 
it will find the route in the routing table and it will see that 192 160 1 .1 is towards dmz okay so now we have to create the security policy these are only two things where people are not able to understand what we need to do okay so now we have to create the security policy now now you will tell me what i have to do okay what would be the source type in the chat source zone source will source address will be any that's perfect source zone will be pan zone correct and what would be the destination zone destination zone now will be your dmz zone why because it has done the lookup it has done second forwarding lookup okay from where we came to know that final packet will reside on your dmz okay and what will be your destination address public address or private address here again there is some logic it will be your 2.2.2 i know some people are confused okay it will be 2.2.2 again why 2.2.2 because here your security policies and nat policies are just lookup lookup is happening only okay netting and security policies are not getting applied nat policy will get applied in your fast path do nat if applicable okay security policy is also just lookup is happening policy lookup so these lookups are before your packet get netted 2.2.2 will get netted to 192.168.1.1 .1 after it will go for checking the policy okay when the net will get applied but here it just lookup so it it is not netted yet that's why only 2.2.2 come will come your zone will be different the reason for that this is destination that and policy will be should be there for where your packet is going to lie so if you compare what is the difference between nat policy and the security policy only one difference your destination zone is getting changed destination zone will get changed from wan to dmz your destination ip is not getting changed the reason for that is this is pre natted policy okay your nat will happen here do nat if applicable your nat is not happened that's why your public ip is not changed okay your forwarding lookup happened your second forwarding lookup happened that's why it came from wan to dmz that is the reason okay i hope you understood that the reason for dmz is only that your second forwarding lookup happened your second forwarding lookup happened and from there it came to know that original destination is dmz okay your ip is not getting ip is not 192.168 the reason for that your nat will happen here not here that's why before applying nat it need to check the security lookup it need to do the security policy lookup that is the only reason suppose even if you are not able to understand that logic and you want to remember it there is only one difference you need to change the destination zone destination zone will be where the original packet will lie okay when the server will reply to that that will be a stateful inspection there will be a session table okay session table will be there so it will check the table and it will automatically go from the same policy there is no like you have to create another policy or something like that these firewalls are stateful firewalls okay we have no need to create another policy for that only one policy will work okay so i hope this is clear and it will go to check your security policy your security policy is matched and rule match action allow then it will create the session if it is not match the policy it will discard the packet once the session is created that will go into layer 2 and layer 4 packet processing 
and this is what i explained in the starting next subsequent packets will follow fast path but this is first packet so this will go from slow path to fast path and here it will do nat if applicable it will do the netting if netting is applicable and then further it will do the ssl decryption so decryption is like if you want to open a packet if you want to suppose there is one chocolate and you want to see if there is a chocolate inside it or there is a soap okay so there is a soap and it is colored chocolate so you want to unwrap it then you will check if it is chocolate or not so that is what decryption does decryption just unwrap the packet it open the packet so this policy depends upon country to country some countries allows that some country doesn't allow it is not like that we can go on and just apply this if it is not allowed it will go and check the session app identifier so where it will check if you see here your session table there is application already identified web browsing google update this is i have created custom application test okay undecided like it is not able to identify the traffic okay so here it is maintaining the session for the application as well so this is what I explained here okay so okay it's the slide so here only the different part difficult part is here where you have to struggle you need to give your attention here okay the rest of the thing which are very simple now your packet will get checked for session application okay obviously this is the first package so session app will not be identified and it will go for identification it will identify the application here in application identification there are certain processes like app override what is app override you can type in chat what do you understand with app override so i'll explain you what is app override app override suppose you have your application in dmz and there is obviously there would not be any signature for that okay so whenever the packet will come it will do all the processing and it will reach here up to session app and from here it will go to identify the application when it will identify the application obviously in pattern based application identification this is parallel to database they would not be having any database for your personal application when it will go on checking it will say that i'm not able to find out the application okay when it is not able to find out the application it will show you something like that undecided or unknown application not found something like that you will get in the application so what is this advantage of that this advantage of that when the second another packet will come that will ask session app identified then it will say no not identified unidentified then it will again check the application so how many time your packet will come it will keep on checking your application so your processing is happening all the time your cpu your extra resources are getting utilized so this is the option where you can override the application you can make custom signature and you can give it name this is test name i given and you can see that it is it has identified you can give your application's name whatever you like and you can add in your application and it will identify this and you can see it believes you and it just skipped its pattern matching it believes in you and it will directly go you to you will directly go to security policy lookup based on application if you have said that that application should be allowed it will go for the content inspection here otherwise it will get discarded okay suppose your application is allowed and it will go for content id inspection let's discuss that this is a very detailed topic okay so i'm not explaining much here here where your sp3 parallel single pass parallel processing you can say is happening your you have one database okay 
one single database where your all the features your antivirus your spyware your vulnerability okay your ips ids all these things will get checked here and there is only one database the examples which i have given you in the starting there is only one database where it will get checked another thing very important thing is that application changed from content inspection okay if your application will get changed for example you are accessing facebook.com and in facebook.com you are going to access your chat also so your application has changed okay so it will check application changed again your application will go and it will identify there is no security policy for that then it will drop the packet so you cannot access the chat so this is very smart firewall where it will check if application is changed and there is any policy for that or not okay detection rules whatever is detected and after that it apply the security profiles and packet will be forwarded to your egress so this was our packet flow we'll go to our slide okay so i think uh, i have covered everything vcs is just a virtual virtual system like if you have worked in uh, fortigate so like fortigate can fortigate there is a vdom in uh, here palo alto we say vcs vcs is just you are dividing your firewall into multiple instances like you have taken a big hardware of your firewall and now you need second firewall also you can divide your firewall you can you can make different instances of one firewall so once you divide that firewall there will be different cpu different ram different memory for that firewall okay and that will work as individual firewall this is helpful like you do not have space or you are you want to like save your space you have one firewall you want to save your money okay you don't want to purchase another another hard hardware but in your existing hardware there is capacity that you can divide that okay so you can utilize that is a vcs so that is that is different vertical i can say a very advanced thing so this is what vcs is okay so guys i have covered everything i hope uh, there is 7 minutes left i will just check your knowledge of uternat okay what uter nat is i will see if i have captured any diagram for that mm okay there is there isn't a, any diagram i'll i'll explain you there is one system okay this is your firewall and this is wan interface this is dmz this is dmz server and the ip address of dmz is 172.168.1.1 this is 10.10.10.10 okay and this is lan wan is having 2.2.2.2 okay so we can also make a policy from lan to dmz directly so that it wants to access the dmz it can directly access but for security reason i want it has to go outside and then it has to access my dmz okay this is u turn you can see this is u turn it is taking okay so they will when they have to access this uh, url that that will be www.test.com so that url will get resolved into the public ip 2.2.2.2 okay so that for this destination will be 2.2.2.2 not this one so this is called uturn nat means even it has to it has to access dmz it will go outside and then it will go come in 
that will be your Newton NAT. So if I talk about the NAT policy, NAT policy is always for your original packet. So what will be your source zone and IP? Please type. Perfect. Source zone will be LAN. Okay, source zone will be LAN and IP will be 10.10.10.10. Okay, what will be your destination zone and IP? Correct. This person is very much intelligent, Karan Kapoor. So, destination zone will be WAN and your destination IP will be 2.2.2. .2. The reason behind is your destination is 2.2.2. It is getting resolved to 2.2.2. .2. Okay. The first thing that you have to type is destination. Okay. If you are not able to understand the zone, you type the destination. Okay. And then you think that the forwarding look lookup, the route will be where? Route will obviously be towards when, not towards the DMZ for this IP address. That is why your destination zone will be this. So when you are creating a NAT policy, the toughest part is you have to write original packet. Translated packet is very simple. Like you have to do the destination translation and there you need to type only 172, 168, 1.1. Okay. And what is what would be the security policy? Source, zone, and IP. Source zone will be LAN. Okay. Yeah, Akhil too. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. LAN and then IP. Okay. Correct. 10 dot 10 dot. Okay. And what would be the destination zone? And IP. Perfect. Destination zone will be the DMZ. Why DMZ? Because when it done the dirt, when it done the NAT, in NAT it came to know that 2.2.2 .2 is getting NATed to 172, 168, 1.1. Here we have found only the destination zone, but we have not done any NATing. So your destination IP will be 2.2.2.2 only. Perfect, guys. So this was today's class. I hope you enjoyed. You can give your comments. You can just subscribe my channel. Okay. I have I have mentioned in the chatting and you can I will also type here del dot youtube.com Okay, you can go here. I will upload my video. You can subscribe the channel and you can give comments if you like. Okay. And there is my website. If you want to see full content. Whatever classes we give, you can see the slavers here. There are some more detailed packet flow also where we tell you in the where you tell in the CLI. So you can go here and you can check. If you like, you can contact us. Okay. So okay, you can just uh, send me email if you have any doubt. Okay, I will type my email here. ss198939 at the rate gmail.com you can type here and you can send your queries okay guys bye recording as i told you that recording i will upload so you can get the recording from there in youtube so i told you that you can subscribe the channel and you can get the recording there okay PPT I cannot share because there is so much hard work in PPT. <laughs> it took a lot of time for me when I just created it, it took four hours. So PPT I cannot share. Okay, but obviously recording I'll share you. Okay guys, thanks, bye, have a nice day. Thanks, thanks, Danny. Thank you so much for free uh, session in training final. Bro, that was the only class. That that class was just to tell you about my method, like how I teach you. If you like the method, then you can come for the paid classes. So that was some much that I have explained here. If anybody wish, they can come for the paid classes. That's what 
uh, like if you are spending money in different tutor and the method is not good then you are wasting your money but here you are investing your money what i think if you like like the class thanks all the class is always online class so we give you the troubleshooting and all those things so if you want uh, a detailed discussion then you can contact